writing. So let's begin our moving practice. We're going to start in mountain pose. The heat is running. I'm going to try to speak up over the sound of the heat. It is going to go off in about 15 minutes. So stand up about with your feet about hip distance apart, your toes pointing forward. Feel free to close your eyes or just soften your eyes. You might take a gaze forward or downward. You can just come to stillness right away, or if you just want to take a few moments to just get into your body, whether you want to roll your shoulders or move your head and neck, or bend your knees, move your hips side to side, just to get a sense of your body as you're arriving and preparing for your practice. And then once you've become reacquainted with your body, you can come to stillness. Again, with eyes closed or a soft gaze forward. And just tune in to your breath. Notice your own breathing. Just slow, steady breaths in and out. And this might be ujjayi breathing. Using the muscles of your throat to produce that power in your breath. Really just more energy and awareness with your breath. As you inhale, you might feel the lifting and lengthening of your spine as breath rises to fill up your lungs. In a slow and controlled exhale, where you might draw your navel inward towards your spine, engaging your abdominal lock. Again, a nice full breath in, feeling a little taller in your body expansiveness in the lungs, exhaling, and that light contraction of your abdominal muscles. Do that a few more times. This awareness of breath and body. Take three more breaths. When you're ready to move, inhale and extend your arms overhead. Just reach all the way up. Treat it like a good stretch. Reach high. Exhale. We're going to fold forward. So a good hinge from your hips. Bend your knees as much as you need to to make your way down towards your toes. And inhale. Slide your hands up to your knees or your thighs and extend your spines of a long, flat back. We'll exhale and fold again. Let's hold our forward fold for a few breaths. Here you might steady yourself by, by placing your hands on your shins or knees, or if it feels okay, just hang heavily forward, just taking that ragdoll quality of the posture, where you just hang and the shoulders are loose. And even here you can circle your shoulders like you did in standing, or a gentle shake and movement of your head and neck. You can keep a slight bend in your knees, Feel the lengthening and stretch quality in your hamstrings, your low glutes. Ready to move, let's shift the weight back into the heels. Bend your knees like you're about to sit down into a low chair and look forward. Extend your arms out to the side. We'll inhale and stand up all the way, reaching into the air. Then exhale, yes, bring your hands together and down to your heart. Just pause for a moment. Let's just repeat that same sequence at your own pace. Inhale, extend your arms into the air. Good energy in your fingertips. Exhale, lead with your heart. Fold forward, a softness in your knees. Again, moving at your own pace. Don't have to follow exactly along with me. Inhale, rise up halfway, halfway, or long tabletop posturing. Exhale, fold with a softness in your knees, maybe returning to that ragdoll quality. Then roll back into your heels, bend your knees, look forward. That should extend your spine. Use your arms and a full breath in to rise up. Yeah, reach high, another big stretch. Exhale, bring in your palms together and back down to your heart. Pause here, return to breath. The feeling of your breath, even the sound of your breath.
Let's continue, we'll add on. Inhale, sweep the arms into the air. And exhale, we'll fold forward. Take your time, maybe touching the ground or maybe just your shins. Inhale, rise up halfway. This exhale, we're gonna bend the knees, bring your hands down to your mat. So you can walk or step or even hop back if you'd like back into plank pose. We're gonna hold plank for a few breaths. Continue, continue to feel that length in the body as you did in standing and mountain pose. But now we've had this added strength feel. Core drawing up, navel, navel pulling up towards spine to engage your core. Strong hands pressing into the ground. Breathe in for more length. Exhale, bend your knees a little to send your hips up into the air, right away into downward facing dog. This is just a little shortcut I like to take. And you can do that any time in your practice. We'll pause here. You can just hold in stillness or even add some more movement to your body as you'd like. Make adjustments with your feet and hands so you have a steady foundation. Maybe pedal the feet like you're walking or pedaling a bicycle. Stretching your calves, pressing one heel down, then the other. And as you lift the heels, maybe you'll feel a stretch through your toes. Notice also any sensations in other parts of the body. Let your knees bend. Maybe move your hips side to side. Hands rooting strongly into the mat, strong straight arms. You might even sink the chest a bit towards the ground. Take another breath or two and just return to stillness in your down dog. Then take another full breath in, preparing to move with an exhale, walk, step, or hop. Both feet back up to the top of your mat. Inhale to extend your spine, lifting up halfway. Exhale, fold. Again, with soft knees, we'll inhale and come back up to standing, reaching up as high as you can. And exhale, hands together, back down to your heart. We're gonna to continue to move right away. Inhale, sweep your arms into the air. And exhale, take chair pose or a chair-like position, Utkatasana. Once here, we're gonna breathe in, maybe a little bit more extension out through your arms. Exhale, let's dive again down towards toes. Inhale, rising up halfway. Ex ex this exhale, bent knees, hands to the mat, walk step or maybe a light hop back into plank pose. You can do that same shortcut to down dog or with your exhale, bend elbows, lower yourself down to Chaturanga Dandasana. In your inhale to a back bend, it might be an up dog, a cobra pose or locust or any other back bend. And exhale, downward facing dog. Settle into your inverted posture. Pause for a moment we're gonna add on. When you're ready, inhale, extend your right leg up, reaching back nice and long behind you. Exhale, right foot to the top of the mat with a light landing. We'll turn left heel to the ground behind you. Feel the weight of the body shift back into that foot so you feel rooted and grounded. So you can lift your hands easily, rising up to warrior one. So an inhale to rise up, looking forward. Our exhale will hinge at the hips. Bring your hands back down to the ground. Step back, plank pose. Take your shortcut or full flow if you'd like as we meet together in downward facing. So again, you might move through an upward facing dog into downward facing dog. Whenever you're ready, an inhale to extend your left leg up into the air, nice and straight and strong. Exhale, left foot to the top of the mat, landing near left hand, right heel turns to the ground behind you. Good breathing, shifting the weight back, hands are light so you can easily float right up, warrior one, taking your time, no rush. Exhale, we'll fold. Plant your hands so you can step or slide the left foot back into plank pose. Finishing your sequence. Flowing through a nice vinyasa. And exhale, downward facing dog. Pausing in in your down dog. Then from here we're gonna go down to the ground. So you might kneel down. And you're gonna take a seat in the center of your mat. Swing the legs around to the front. We're gonna lie down. We're gonna take bridge pose. So you're gonna lie down with knees bent and feet flat on the mat. And maybe with knees stacked nicely right over ankle bones, so it was a straight line, your shins are straight lines up and down. But I like to take my feet a little wider on the mat. 
that just provides a little bit more space for my hips and low back when I eventually rise. So you'll breathe in to fill up your lungs. Exhale to empty your belly. You can certainly breathe out of your mouth. Feel that nice core engagement and energy now to lift your hips up into the air. And even once you've lifted, you can make some adjustments with your feet. And then maybe your arms, maybe even use your arms to help you lift a little higher, perhaps bending your elbows at 90 degrees, pressing the backs of your arms down into the ground. I feel the hips lift a little higher, maybe a little bit more lift and expansion in your chest. You might even kind of rock your upper body a little bit left and right to get your arms and shoulders a bit underneath you if you're able, a little bit more stable perhaps, and even the ability to to squeeze your shoulder blades together just to activate your upper back muscles as another source of stability in your posture. So we have our bridge pose. A couple more breaths here. To move, we're gonna start by wiggling the toes forward or step forward a little bit. Extend your arms straight up into the air. That should create space in the back body so we can roll back down to the ground. Before we continue, we're gonna extend the legs out front and extend the arms out behind you so we create this lengthening effect through the entire body. Just reach, active stretch. Then just bring your arms down by your side like you're in Shavasana. Now you're going to bend both knees again, feet flat on the mat. From here, we're going to get into a hip opener. And sometimes we might even call this uh, a reclining pigeon pose. I talked about we're going to be doing pigeon today. So you might consider this a reclining pigeon pose, but it also has a yoga name, which is uh, eye of the needle pose. So first, we're going to cross the left ankle over right thigh. So pick up your left foot, cross that left ankle over right thigh. And I would suggest flexing that left foot. It just keeps the, that whole leg active and even supports and stabilizes the, the joints. So you've crossed the leg and then just check in to notice if this feels fine, because you can stay just like this if you want. But if you're not really feeling anything, then you wanna lift your right foot and draw both legs toward yourself. And that should add sensation to that outer left hip and glute area. So picking up the right foot and just bring the legs in closer. Here's where you thread the needle. So you might take your left arm and thread it through that space between the legs. Then you can hold on to your right shin or right hamstring to hold on to the legs. Then flex your right foot too. So flexing both feet. So the legs are active. And what's fun with, with this is that you can kind of play with the sensation. You can certainly add more by drawing the legs closer to your body. If you need less, send them away. I tend to have tight outer hips. And so this kind of starts to target that area a little bit. So we are gonna be doing pigeon pose. And this is also a nice alternative to pigeon. Sometimes pigeon can be a little a little rough on the knees or ankles, and so you can always do this variation if you want. All right, just take one more breath in and out. And then we'll go ahead and set the right foot down, uncross the left leg, hold steady for a moment in stillness, maybe even soften a little bit. get set up for the other side. So we'll cross right ankle now over left thigh. Same thing, flexing the foot. Check in to see if this is enough sensation for you. If not, go ahead and lift your left foot up off the ground. Flex that foot. Thread the needle with your right arm. Hold on to your left shin or hamstring. And then you can continue the control of how much sensation you would like in the posture. You might hold in one spot, take some breaths, which might create some space. You might be able to take this a, a little bit deeper. These holding postures really give you an opportunity to just check in or tune in to your own body. Listen to yourself, listen to your body. 
and respond accordingly. If you want more or need more, maybe you'll take that little extra step. Or if your body needs less, honor that. All right, two more breaths. We'll go ahead and set the left foot down. We'll uncross the legs. Again, just come to stillness for a moment. Whenever you're ready, no rush. You can draw knees, both knees to chest with several breaths or just a good exhale. Rock your way up to a seated position and we'll make our way to boat pose, Navasana. So once in seated, you might lift the feet off the ground. You can even do this with heels on the ground if you want. But if they're lifted, again, you might activate the feet to keep the legs strong. You can start by holding on to the legs as a way to help extend the spine, lift yourself up nice and tall. Even lift the chin slightly so your neck is nice and long in the same alignment as the rest of your spine. You can also release the legs. Taking those nice full breaths to feel the lengthening of the spine, breath rising up, filling up your lungs, exhaling to engage core body. Okay, we're going to flow from here, breathing in. We're going to exhale, cross legs if you can, hands in front to step or hop back into plank. We're just swing the legs around to step back into plank pose. Take a shortcut here for, to downward facing dog. Just lift your hips. Let's continue our flow, our lunges. Inhale, extend right leg up behind you, first nice and straight, and then bend that right knee. And then lift the knee up towards the ceiling just a little bit. It's just another hip opener in this down dog. As you exhale, we'll unwind it, step through for warrior one, landing with right foot at the top, left heel turns to the ground behind you, rooted into the ground, float your arms up into the air. Inhale, first warrior, and our exhale to our second warrior. Make some adjustments there as you'd like. Yeah, if you want to take this into a nice deep lunge, taking the feet a little wider if you'd like. Getting into our hips, yeah, nice. Then side angle, so maybe reaching out, following the right hand forward to angle the upper half of your body, wonderful. Rotate your arms, right arm reaching down, left arm reaching up, that's nice. Good, love the range. Here you might be able to bring the right hand all the way down to the ground or a stack of blocks or come up much higher where your arm is actually resting lightly on top of the thigh. Stay here. You're going to bring your left hand down behind you, behind you, perhaps to your low back. And once it's in place, roll the left shoulder back or just draw it back so that it feels like there's a little bit more of an opening through the chest, a lengthening through the spine. Nice. A few more breaths. We'll inhale now to re-extend left hand up into the air. Exhale, we'll turn. Let's bring the hands down to the ground. Let's step back into plank, but keep the right foot lifted. So reaching back energetically with that right foot. We're gonna finish the vinyasa. Coming down, chaturanga. You can bring the leg down first or once your chest is down, lower the leg, then inhale to open your heart, lift the chest, exhale, downward facing dog. Other side when you're ready. Inhale, extend left leg into the air. We're gonna bend the knee and then lift the knee for a little hip opener. Take another breath. As you exhale, we'll unwind it, send left foot to the top of the mat. Back to warrior one on this side now. Right heel plants into the floor. Rising up, first warrior, and our opening with an exhale to warrior two. Settling in, find balance. How deep you'd like to take your pose. Checking in with your body. And then side angle, following the left arm forward to angle the upper half of your body. Rotate your arms, again, choosing the space that feels best. Maybe it's up high. Or maybe you like to go down a little lower, finding the ground with your left hand or a stack of blocks. Nice opening up through the chest. We're gonna open it a bit more as you now bring your right hand down behind you, perhaps to low back. If that's too far, you can always just bring your right hand to your right hip and still roll the right shoulder back. 
Some of you might be able to reach all the way around your body, maybe touching left hip or left thigh. Or if you're much lower in the posture, you can even bind this pose if you want to. Those are just some options. Let's inhale when you're ready to re-extend right hand up into the air. We'll exhale, turn, bring the hands down to the ground. We'll step back, plank pose again with the left foot lifted, reaching back energetically. So we've drawn a strong straight line through the body, head to toes, finishing the flow, chaturanga, lowering the leg last. Inhale, upward facing or a cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Hold for a moment in down dog. Feel the re-extension of spine. Nice full breath in as you exhale, walk, step, or even hop both feet up to the top of your mat. Inhale, extending spine. Exhale, fold. Weights in the heel, soft knees. Inhale, reverse swan dive. Come all the way up, nice and tall, reaching into the air. Good. Exhale, we're going to bring the arms down by your side to finish. Down to this version of mountain pose. Palms facing forward. Take a breath. We're going to do a couple balancing postures. I'm going to start with tree pose. So you're going to start by shifting your weight over into your right foot. I'm going to mirror you. I'm going to try to. Shifting your weight over to your right foot, root down into the ground. That's it. Feel nice and tall, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, draw belly in. Let's float the left foot up. And when you lift it, flex the foot again. It just keeps that leg active. Swing the knee out to the side. There's our hip opener. And then placing foot on the inside of your standing leg. Yeah, you can bring it up high if you want to, if that's your, that's your go-to, maybe to your inner thigh or down lower below the knee. I usually go to my calf. You can even use the ground. If you need the ground today, just use the ground with your toes. Then your inhale, you can take your arms up into the air. Feel free to keep them straight up like that even a little wider in a V shape or even a U shape by bending the elbows. You can always bring hands to heart if you wanted to. Finding something to focus on out in front of you or slightly downward, you might just dart your eyes down at the ground. That might help with some balance. Let's keep the arms extended. We'll swing left knee forward. Lift your knee with the flex foot. Just hold there for a second for a little extra balance, and then place foot on the ground, sweep your arms back down by your side. We'll turn the palms forward, which just creates that nice natural outer spiral in the shoulder <clears throat> to open up through the chest. Whenever you're ready, start shifting weight over into your left foot, root down, feel the energy in that thigh, lengthen spine as you breathe in, exhale, core connected. Then you can just float the right foot up, maybe a flex foot, yeah. Maybe thigh comes to parallel to the ground. We'll swing the knee out to the side, placing foot somewhere on the inside of your standing leg, low, medium, or high. Whenever you're ready, your in breath to take the arms up, reach up, and your exhale to secure your pose. Nice. We'll keep arms lifted. We'll swing the right knee forward, lifting knee, flexed foot. We'll pause for a second. There it is. We'll plant the foot back down, arms back down by your side. Wonderful. Feel free to even shake that out. Ah, just all that energy that's used to produce our poses. You can just kind of shake things out a little bit. Okay. We're going to go back to a balancing posture. Okay. So staying on one foot, but we're going to add a pigeon like pose. Okay, so we're going to be crossing the leg and I'll break it down again. <clears throat> so nice and tall in our mountain pose, start shifting your weight into your right foot. We'll root down. We'll start lifting the left foot whenever you're ready, maybe a flexed foot. Again, maybe thigh parallel to the ground. Stay there, but bend the left knee a little bit. I'm sorry, right knee. Bend your right knee a little bit. And then you're going to do a little soccer kick. Just kick the soccer ball off to the side and then cross the ankle over thigh. And then here, place hands on hips. And just check in with that hip alignment. Sometimes when we cross the leg, that might drop <laughs> that hip, okay? So we want a nice alignment in the hips as possible. And then start sending your hips back, bending the right knee as your heart comes forward, all at the same time as you take your chair-like pose with the cross leg. And just like we did in that lying down version, you know, you want to maybe flex this foot. <clears throat> you can stay here. 
Okay, or just choose wherever you'd like to go in this posture. You might sit down a little deeper into the pose. You can even remove hands from the hips, maybe place in front of the shin. And in doing so, what you might do is actually plug into the shin, just push into it gently. And that might help you extend spine a little bit more, bring a little bit more energy to that outer hip and glute on that left side. You can even go much lower if you want to even touch the ground. This could even lead you to a bal arm balancing posture. Nice. All right, we're gonna extend arms forward. Well, rising up, uncross the leg, lifting knee, flex foot, hold. Yes, plant the foot back down, arms back down by your side, shake all that out if you want, especially that standing leg, right? <clears throat> Good, yeah, and the toes. Good job. <clears throat> so stay where you are. So you might, like, you know, there's all these little variations of the posture. So you might just stay up nice and high. If that's a good hip opener for you, then stay here, even here. And that bracing effect, even just down a little bit lower, brace against the leg to extend spine. Okay, core engaged, and that gets a little bit more sensation into the uh, outer hip and thigh, maybe touching the ground or stacked blocks. Okay, we will be coming back to this pose. You don't have to do this this first time, but you might even come down to a, you know, a setup for an arm balancing posture if you want to take it down that direction. Okay, all right. Other side, so shifting weight over into the left foot. Root down, nice and tall with an exhale. We'll float the right foot up. Go ahead, bend the left knee a little. A little soccer kick. Cross ankle over thigh. Hold for a second there, hands on hips. So we can just check in with alignment, making sure they stay aligned. That will help with balance. And then just sitting back and down a little deeper. Heart forward, nicely extended spine. Nice. Again, your focus is maybe somewhere out in front of you. Flexed crossed uh, leg or foot. Yeah, stay here or then choosing some of these other options. It could be just your hands or forearms against the shin, if you'd like. Play with this, yeah. You can get playful with some of these poses. You might be low enough to touch ground, maybe moving into that balance, if you'd like, but not, certainly not necessary. Just really getting into this, some balance, some focus, and that hip opener. Good job. Yes. All right. We're going to hinge our way back up. So arms reaching out, coming up, standing up, reach into the air. Let's uncross the leg, lift the knee, flexed foot, plant the foot, arms down, shake it out. <sighs> yeah. Mm hmm. Good. Perfect. So ready for our flow, returning to mountain pose when you're ready to move. We'll inhale, reach into the air. Let's take chair pose again, exhaling into that seat. Maybe sitting back and down a little deeper if you want. We'll breathe in. Exhale, diving out of the seat, down towards toes, forward fold. Inhale, rise up halfway. Your exhale, folding again, plant your hands, hop, step, or walk back, plank pose. As you like, come right down, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, up dog. It's going to move through a nice flow, but go at your own pace. Exhale, downward facing dog, settling in. Inhale, whenever you're ready, extending right leg up. We're going to bend the knee, lift the knee for a little hip opener. On this exhale, we're going to bring right knee underneath you towards your left elbow, your left elbow. So it crosses the midline, so a little twist. Take the leg back up into the air, reach. And right foot to the top of the mat, warrior one. Left heel plants, shift the weight back, hands are light. Inhale, float your way up. Exhale, open, warrior two. Settle in. Side angle, reaching out. Rotate the arms. Reach into the air with this left hand initially with the in-breath. On the exhale, bring left hand down behind you like you did earlier. Maybe to low back or left hip or right hip. Left shoulder rolls back. Maybe even turn your gaze upward, just for a little neck stretch. Inhale, look at your left hand as it floats back up into the air. Turn your body, bring your hands down to the ground. Step back, plank pose, right foot lifted. 
With an exhale, right knee comes in to touch, right elbow if you can. We extend right leg back behind you, still in plank. Finish the flow, come on down, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing. This is the exact same thing, other side. Inhale, extending left leg into the air. We'll bend the knee with the lift of the knee. We get that hip opener. The exhale would take left knee underneath you towards right elbow. It doesn't have to touch the elbow, but just in that general direction for a little twist. Hit the left leg back up into the sky behind you, straight line. Exhale, left foot to the top of the mat. Here we go. Warrior one. Rise when you're ready, when you're all set up with balance. And your exhale into warrior two. Settle in. Side angle, reaching out, follow the left arm forward. Rotate the arms. Once you're here, an inhale to reach high into the sky with the right arm. The exhale, bring the right hand down behind you to low back. Or right hip. Or left hip. Roll that right shoulder back. Your inhale to re-extend right hand up into the air. We'll turn, bring hands back down to the ground. Step back, plank pose, left foot lifted. Inhale for that extra length in the body. Exhale, left knee. If you can, tap left elbow with the knee. Extend it straight back. Stay in that plank-like pose. Then finish your push-up. Chaturanga. Up dog. And downward facing. Hold for a few breaths. All right, we're going to inhale, re-extend right leg up into the air. Exhale, right foot to the top of the mat. Stay just like this, hands on the ground. So we're in this lunge action here. You're going to gently set your left knee onto the ground. Now, if you need to pad your left knee, <clears throat> go ahead and maybe use a blanket or you just fold your mat or if you got something soft underneath there, go ahead and do that. Then we're going to lift upper body so we're here, like so. Hands maybe just resting on this right thigh. We're going to go into a deep lunge, but let's set this up so we don't interfere or put too much pressure in the left knee joint. So I like to lean back a little bit, taking some of the weight off the foot so I can easily wiggle it forward, changing this angle. Hands back on the thigh. Inhale, get nice and tall, upper body, yeah. Exhale, start to hinge forward or lunge forward, and you can see that whole shift of the knee now restacking perhaps over heel or ankle. Again, not much pressure there, but the emphasis can be on this left hip flexor, okay, as we lunge forward. We're going to do a couple things. One is we are going to stay up high in the posture. Now you can stay straight up, nice and tall like this, which has a back bend feel to the body, and that might be in that low, low back. If you were to lift up high enough with a good core or inner thigh engagement, you may not have any compression back there, but if you feel like you're sinking into the low back, feel free to get out of that sensation and maybe hinge forward, okay? Take your time, few more breaths. Maybe sinking into this. Still staying up high, either straight up or a bit of a hinge forward, get out of low back. Next thing, this is really just an option, but you can give it a try. If you're far enough forward, you might want to actually lean forward a little bit. This might help. Even bring left hand to the ground. Because we're going to lift the left foot, bending the left knee, bringing the heel in towards back body. Okay? Still hugging inner thighs towards each other for a little balance. Okay? Engaging. If you're able, reach back. If you can touch the heel or even grab hold of the foot, draw it in. All right, so our first lunge kind of got it getting into that hip flexor, continuing getting more into that thigh. And with this deep lunge in front, maybe getting into this right inner thigh. A couple more breaths. We're going to carefully release that back leg. Just bring hands back down to the ground here, maybe unpad that left knee. 
plant the hands into the ground, tuck your toes behind you, that left foot, tuck the toes, and then lift that left knee off the ground. And just feel the hips just lift way up into the air. Pressure into the hands. So you can just slide the right foot back into plank, right foot lifted, okay? Hold there for a moment. From here, we're going directly into pigeon, okay? So bend the right knee again, but now bring right knee to the ground, behind the right wrist, or even slightly to the outside of that right wrist. Angle the leg the way that you like in pigeon, okay? And then set the left knee down behind you. Use the left knee and toes and start to crawl back or shift the weight of your body back, yeah, into the hips. And again, this is where you might wanna decide where you wanna go. Either stay in your pigeon and choose the depth of your posture because you can certainly lie down coming forward onto your elbows or forearms. But if you know this is a little bit too much for your knee, your right knee, or hip, or ankle, then you may wanna flip over onto your back and do that other version, that reclining pigeon pose. Some of you might be able to even get the angle of the leg, this right leg, where your shin is parallel to the front ed edge of your mat flexing the right foot, again, just to activate and stabilize the joints if you choose to take the depth of this posture, okay? And this, in, in a way, mimics what I call that seated, or that cross-legged chair pose, that cross-legged chair pose. Nice. Settling in, another great posture where you can pay attention to what's going on in the body, listen to what's happening, and respond appropriately. Take three more breaths here, or longer if you'd like. We're going to take our time to get out of the pose. If you're on your elbows, slowly come back up onto your hands, and they're probably in front of you here, but we're going to reposition the hands so they're by our side, maybe onto your fingertips. I call them sp spider's legs. So here, maybe your elbows are bent, but here next to your body so you can press into the ground to lift yourself up, straightening the arms, but really lift the torso like you were doing an upward facing dog. Of course, another variation of our pigeon pose. Nice lifting sensation. Stay here or follow me. Bring right hand in front. Maybe lean forward a little bit. Same thing as we did earlier. Bend that back knee. Bring heel in. Maybe reach back. If you can just touch the foot or heel or grab hold, draw it in. Aware of all these sensations. Thigh, hip flexor, outer hip, glute, inner thigh. Even that slight back bend. Okay, we're gonna slowly release the foot back behind. Let's bring hands in front. Tuck toes behind you so you can use your left knee and toes to shift your body weight forward, getting into your hands, weights in the hands. So you can then lift both knees off the floor. Take it back to down dog with the right leg up into the air. And even feel free to move it around. Now you've been lying on that leg for a long time. So feel free to circle it, bend the knee, kick, whatever you want to do there, just to loosen things up. And when you're complete, just bring that foot back down next to the other, returning to your down dog. We have that full sequence on the other side. So we'll start with an inhale to extend left leg straight up into the air. Left foot to the top of the mat. Stay in our lunge. We'll set the right knee gently onto the mat, pat it if you need to. Rise up so your hands are on your thigh. Maybe leaning back so we can adjust this front foot. If you want to go into that deep lunge, then you may want to send that foot way out front there. Hands are on your thigh. We're inhaling to get tall. We want to get a lot of space in the waistline here, so when we exhale, we can start to lunge into that space. Maybe a little bit at first, another breath to get tall and lifted. 
exhaling to go a little deeper as you'd like. Settle into your personal depth of the pose. Remember, you can take that tall back bend feel of this lunge or get out of that sensation if that feels much better for you. Sinking a little deeper. And I notice because my leg is coming directly forward and out, I have a limited range of motion. And I can go, you know, to this place, but I know if I take this foot out to the side a little bit, I can go even deeper. <laughs> Okay, just creates a little bit more space in the pelvis, right? So you can decide what you want to do with that. All right, here's that next little piece. If you decide to go with me, we can lean forward a little bit. Maybe right hand to the ground to help that lean forward. So we can pick up the right foot, bring it in. Maybe it's just like this, just lifting the foot, heel towards backside, hand on the ground for balance, or reach back, touch or grab hold if you can reach it. Pull it in. Three more breaths. When you're ready, carefully releasing the foot to the ground. We can bring the hands to the floor in front, maybe unpad the right knee. Tuck the toes behind you so you can lift that right knee off the ground. Put more weight into the hands, push into the ground for the hips. Lift as high up as you can so there's lightness in this left foot so it slides back easily. Right back into plank, left foot lifted. Extending the body. Then our pigeon pose this side. So left knee can come to the ground either directly behind the left wrist or slightly to the outside of the wrist, which keeps the hips square, okay? Angled leg as it feels right, or even knowing that you needed to flip over onto your back, that's fine too. Right knee and toes to send the body back and settle into the hips. Staying up tall if you want, or crawl forward. Down to elbows, your forearms, maybe you're using blocks or a blanket. Again, if you have that desire and ability, maybe flexing the left foot to help stabilize the joints, even moving to a sensation where your shin is parallel to the front edge of your mat. For a little more depth in that pose if you want it. breaths or stay here a little longer if you'd like. Whenever you're ready, slowly maybe rise up onto the hands, which may be in, in front, then take them to the side. Again, this is all optional. Onto fingertips, push into the ground to help lift upper body. So we're in our king pigeon pose like so, really feel that in that right hip flexor. Maybe take left hand in front for a little stabilization, lean forward a little bit, maybe bending that back knee. Reach back, draw it in. aware of all these sensations. Maybe two more breaths. Good job. And that slow release of that back leg, hands in front. Tuck toes behind you, use knee and toes to shift your weight forward into your hands so your shoulders are stacked over your wrists perhaps. Lift both knees up off the ground. Take this left leg up and back behind you into a down dog, extending the leg perhaps at first, and then any movement 
of that whole leg in its socket. Whenever you feel complete, just set those toes onto the ground next to the other downward facing dog. Whenever you're ready, good exhale to walk, step, or hop. Both feet back up to the top of your mat. Once there, inhale to rise up halfway. We'll exhale to fold. Full breath in, reverse your swan dive. Come all the way up, reaching into the sky. Exhale, hands to heart. Take a moment in the position. Let's put some of these poses together in a vinyasa. Okay, it's gonna start with that cross-legged chair pose, okay? So start shifting weight into your right foot, root down, feel tall. Exhale, pull belly in. We'll float the left foot up, flex foot. Bend the right knee slightly, a little soccer kick. Cross ankle over thigh, sitting back. If you need the awareness of alignment of hips, bring hands to hips. Choose your personal depth, maybe sitting back and down, extended spine, maybe arms out front if you want couple breaths. Just notice if you're able to go a little deeper just because we already did that pigeon pose on the ground which maybe created more space. When you're ready, extend arms forward to rise all the way back up to standing, uncrossing the leg, lifting the knee, flexed foot. Stay here for a second. Bend the right knee again. Follow me. Hinge forward with the upper body. Reach out with the hands, extending your left leg back behind you. Set your toes onto the ground behind you. You'll end up in a high lunge. Rise up nice and tall. Open warrior two. Here, reverse your warrior. Take right hand up into the air. Nice side body stretch. With an exhale, we're gonna windmill, bring the hands down to the mat. We're gonna take it back to down dog by sweeping the right leg back and up into the air. Bend and twist right away. With your exhale, bring right knee underneath you towards left elbow. Left elbow, so crossing the midline. Take right leg back up and behind you. Pigeon pose, right knee comes to the ground behind right wrist, angled leg. Set the left knee onto the ground, shift the body weight back. Now we're not gonna lie forward, we're gonna go right into the king pigeon. Hands by your side, maybe propped up onto fingertips. Press, lift. We're gonna add something here as an option. If you can, squeeze inner thighs towards each other. You should have a feeling of lifting yourself up without your hands in a way. And if you're able to stabilize there, you might be able to take hands up into the air. Reach up, just very briefly. Reach up and then right back down. Hands out front. Tuck toes. Shift weight into hands. Lift both knees. Back into plank. Right foot lifted. Right knee touches right elbow. Re-extend the leg. Chaturanga. Lower the leg, up dog. Downward facing dog. Next exhale, float both feet back up to the top of the mat. Stay on your feet. Inhale to extend spine. Exhale, fold. Full breath in to reverse your swan dive. Back up we go, reaching high. Exhale, hands to heart. Right away to the other side. Shifting weight into the left foot. Long spine, core control, float right foot up, flexing. Bend the left knee, kick the soccer ball, cross leg. Maybe hands on hips. Sit back and down a little deeper to your personal depth. Check in. Good. Adjust or modify as needed. All right, we're gonna float back up. Arms maybe extend out front to help you rise back up into the air. Uncross the leg, lifting knee, flexed foot. A little bend in the left knee again. Hinge forward, extending arms out front for balance as you extend your right leg back behind you. So you can set the toes onto the ground behind you into a lunge, high lunge, rising up nice and tall. Warrior two. Reverse your warrior, left hand reaching into the sky. With an exhale, we're gonna windmill, bring the hands down to the mat. Take it back to down dog. You'll sweep your left foot back and up into the air. Bend and twist open. 
Exhale, left knee towards right elbow, crossing the midline, back up into the sky behind you, straight line, and pigeon. Left knee to the ground, behind left wrist, angled leg. Right knee comes to the ground, use knee and toes to shift the weight back. Reposition your hands to your side. Press to lift to that back bend feel. Stay here for stabilization, or squeeze or hug to center line. The legs really become active, Help, uh, your hips become active, maybe floating arms up into the air. Just reach up, and then right back down. Hands forward, tuck toes behind you, shift weight forward into the hands. So you can lift both knees, back to plank, left foot le extended back behind you, lifted. Good left knee towards left elbow. Extend the leg back, finish your sequence, chaturanga. We'll meet in downward facing. You want to right back down to the ground, maybe hop forward, cross legs to take a seat or just kneel down to take your seat. Legs out front, you know, lie down, bring knees to chest. And once you're here, hugging the knees in, do a couple things. You might hold still, you might move the body. You also just check in with your breath. Here, choose a hip opener that you like to do. It could be happy baby pose. You might be reclining cobbler's pose or some variation of either one or both of those. You might even go back to that reclining pigeon pose, the eye of the needle. Continue with your hip openers. There's no rush to transition, but our next pose will be a twist. If you decide to take this twist, you might even hug both knees to chest lightly, then take both knees over to the left side to begin, and then your right arm extending to the right side to create your rotation. And again, this is just an option if you're still working on more hip opening and release. Two more breaths. You might bring knees back up to center, briefly pause. Knees down to the other side when you're ready. Spinal twist. feel ready, just return to center and decide on your resting pose. You might move right into Shavasana or any other restorative posture that would feel good at this moment and just settle in.
return to the awareness of your breath. Just simply notice your breath. And as you return to this awareness, take five slow, deep breaths. Allowing your breath to generate movement throughout your body. Start gently then move very slowly and carefully roll onto either side of your body. Take your time. Still moving in slow motion, guide your way up to a seated position. to complete. Go ahead and inhale. Extend your arms out and up into the air. As you exhale, bring your palms together and down to your heart. Pause here and just take one more breath on your own. And as we come to the close of our practice together, we bow saying, Namaste.